Hi guys, in this video we will pick up with Roman numeral 5 here, uh, the chemistry of esters. Now we've already seen how to synthesize esters back in section 2b and 3b. One of the most common ways to synthesize an ester is by Fischer esterification, if you remember. We also looked at the O-alkylation reaction. Okay, with esters we're getting into what are or can be final products. Acid chlorides and anhydrides are typically reactive intermediates only used in the lab. They're too reactive to be found in nature. They're too reactive to be part of a in-target molecule such as a drug. But when we get to esters, they are even less reactive and they do not react with pure water like in hydrides or acid chlorides do. So there's a divide here. Because they don't react with pure water, they're more likely to be found in nature. We can also have an ester in a drug or some other use, um, maybe a materials science use. That doesn't mean we cannot hydrolyze them. We can get them to react with water, but we need an acid catalyst or uh, basic conditions. So of course anything in the box can be hydrolyzed back to the carboxylic acid. And so at this point we really only have two reactions of esters. Hydrolysis back to the acid. We can also convert them to amides, but it's much better, a much better approach is to convert an acid chloride to an amide or an anhydride to an amide because those are more reactive. And typically you would not choose to react the less reactive ester to give the amide. But there may be cases or reasons why you would do that. It certainly can be done, but it's just not going to be a common approach to amides. Okay, but hydrolysis back to the acid, and indeed that's the first reaction we'll look at with esters. All right can't use pure water, we either need an acid catalyst or a stronger nucleophile. The stronger nucleophile would be hydroxide, not neutral water. So we can show this reaction here, this ethyl ester being hydrolyzed with aqueous acid back to the carboxylic acid. Of course we will produce ethanol when this oxygen leaves, it'll pick up an H. Now this is just the reverse of Fischer esterification. We already looked at that. Indeed, back over here, we said this reaction can reverse, and we showed it right here. We're just showing it again, focusing on the forward direction. All right, you can work through that mechanism for practice. We've already done it. You can do it again there. Um, so hydrolysis. Okay. This shows an example of hydrolysis of an ester under basic conditions using sodium hydroxide. Since we're under basic conditions and we're producing an acidic product, it will be in the basic form. We will need an H plus workup to convert it back to the neutral form to put the proton on. Okay, now here we have hydroxide There's no, okay, second step is later. First step, there's no acid, so we can't protonate the carbonyl. But that's okay, we have a stronger nucleophile. Hydroxide will add to the non-protonated carbonyl. Electrons up. get to this point here. Okay. We really don't have a proton. There's no proton transfer here. Electrons can come back down. These electrons come here. Now we could go backwards. We could kick off the OH. But to go forward we're going to kick off the O-methyl. And which is a better leaving group? They're both neutral oxygens. There's not much difference in the leaving group capability. All right, 
Uh, again, there's no proton here to protonate anything, but the only thing we can do is kick this other oxygen off. That takes us forward. Okay, plus the O-methyl anion. But this is a base. This will take the acidic H. See, this is your carboxylic acid, but we're not done because the acid-base reaction is going to take place and that will give the carboxylate anion plus the methanol, which we said we would form. And that is in step one. And as we expected, if we make an acidic product under basic conditions, it will exist in the basic form. Now, to get to the neutral form, we need H plus workup, and we can come in here with our favorite strong acid, like HCl or sulfuric acid. And then these electrons take the H. Okay, I'm showing this very generically here. Um, put the proton on. So at this point, we're taking care of the proton. And so we have hydrolyzed our ester. We have essentially added water to it, but I mean, if you, you can draw out a formal line reaction, ester plus water gives acid plus methanol. Yes. But if you look at our mechanism, nowhere in our mechanism did we actually use H2O. Okay, next is just an example. I'll let you do that for homework. Looks like an ester, aqueous hydrolysis. We should be able to give products there. Um, pretty straightforward, but you've got to be able to recognize what the products are of the hydrolysis. Now, when you look at an ester, you can even either have the R group on the oxygen being real small, like maybe just a one carbon methyl, and then the, the R group on the carbonyl being larger. But you can also have the reverse. For example, maybe the R group on the carbonyl is just a small methyl, and the R group on the oxygen is larger. Don't let that throw you. It's still an ester. It's still the same mechanism. You need to be able to show products here. Okay. Um, it's an interesting application, saponification of a triglyceride to give soap. A triglyceride is a triester, uh, which is found in the body. It is a sort of a storage molecule for fatty acids. What would be the products if we hydrolyze this triglyceride with hydroxide? All right, show the products. That is, if you hydrolyze all three esters. Okay, so homework. Not sure what that was there, but that was homework. Looks like an ethyl. <clears throat> now here we have a cyclic ester. All right, the O, and back over to this side. Basically, the ester, the carbonyl O, is part of a ring. Okay. A cyclic ester is known as a lactone. 
It almost sounds like a ketone, but it's actually an ester. You need to know that name. All right. What if we hydrolyze this ester with hydroxide followed by H plus workup? Of course, hydroxide could be sodium, potassium, or lithium hydroxide. It could be others. Homework. Show products here of these hydrolysis reactions. Now C. Now B must have been hydrolysis of esters to carboxylic acids, yeah? C is going to be conversion of esters to amides and it will involve reacting with an amine. And so instead of calling it hydrolysis, we can call it aminolysis. The amine will come in here and do a reaction and break a bond, cleave it or lyse it. All right, it's really no different than reacting with hydroxide. We have a pretty good nucleophile. It's classified as strong. Even though it's neutral, we know neutral sp3 amines can be considered strong nucleophiles, although they're not super strong. All right. Try this mechanism on your own. Here we need to think about taking care of the proton. All right. At this point, again, I will repeat. It's the same mechanism. You just have to see the, the little nuances, the differences, strong nucleophile, weaker nucleophile, taking care of proton. Okay, it's things like that. I'm not going to do it for you because it's, it's better for you to work through it. Okay, maybe make a couple of mistakes and then learn from your mistakes. But hopefully, if you're kind of up to speed, just work your way through it. Do one step at a time, logical steps, okay, and get to where you need to go. Fundamental steps that we've talked about. But again, if you wanted to make this amide, it would be a better reaction to have an acid chloride here or an anhydride. But that doesn't mean you cannot do this reaction. All right, next would be chemistry of amides, a.k.a. carboxamides, long name. Now we've already synthesized them from acid chlorides and anhydrides, or even esters such as we just did. Now amides are not going to be converted to any of the above. They, a primary amide can be converted to a nitrile. That's a very specialized reaction. The most common reaction and almost the only reaction that you can do is hydrolyze them back to the carboxylic acid. And indeed, that's what we see here first. All right. I wish I'd have given you a little more room here to do one of these mechanisms or both. All right. I could adjust the handout here. Um, looks like one is under acidic conditions. Of course, of course, there we're going to protonate the carbonyl first, right? Then the nucleophile is water. Down here, we do not have a, any acid, so we're not going to protonate the carbonyl, but we have a stronger nucleophile, that being hydroxide. All right. Need to take care of proton. Now here, we have hydrolysis of a cyclic amide where the nitrogen and carbonyl is part of a ring. Cyclic esters were lactones. A cyclic amide is known as a lactam. You need to know that name. 
So this is going to be analogous to one above. Okay, aqueous acid. But what we're going to see here, same as over here, is that the leaving group is really not going to leave the molecule because it's part of a ring. All right. Need to show product, be able to show product here. More and more I expect you to be able to do the chemistry more and more on your own, ask questions, and confirm that you see what's going on here. All right. By the way, lactams are often seen as drugs because they're uh, the main component of, for example, penicillins. It is a beta-lactam. Beta-lactam is going to be the four-membered ring. That's because if you take a Really, if this cyclized, if this nitrogen ended up bonded to this carbonyl, that would be a beta lactam, a one, two, a four membered ring. Okay? It's called a beta lactam because at this point, the amine is not only alpha carbon, it's not an alpha amino acid, but it's a beta amino acid. And when it cyclizes to make the lactam, it's called a beta lactam. All right, so this is just a little application of uh, where you may see lactams. All right, uh, amoxicillin actually has two amides. It has the, the lactam amid and it also has a non-cyclic uh, regular amide. Also has a carboxylic acid here. Okay, next let's look at the acidity of amides and more particularly of amides. And what is an amide? Okay, I have some pKa's here. Now as an acid, okay, so all, these are all pKa's looking at acids. And amine has a, this amine has a pKa of about 30. As a base it would be about 10. Okay. Now if we put a carbonyl next door, the NH becomes more acidic and the pKa goes down to about 18 to 20. That's because the resulting anion would then be resonant stabilized into the carbonyl. The charge can be delocalized onto the oxygen. But if the nitrogen is bonded to two carbonyls, which by the way makes it not an amide but an imid, imid functional group, you need to know that name, this NH has a pKa even lower, about 10 to 12. Now we're getting into some acidity because amides can be deprotonated using hydroxide, an aqueous base. They can exist deprotonated in an aqueous environment. The other two typically cannot because if water was around, the conjugate base would take an H and go back to the protonated neutral compound. All right. Now because of the acidity of the M at NH, we can actually do some chemistry here. And the first is to deprotonate it and we can use hydroxide like we just said. Okay. 
and that's going to give, in this case, the potassium thalamid. All right, plus water. Now, of course, this is ionic. The nitrogen is. I'll just do this. The nitrogen is minus, and the potassium is positive. That's just like if I showed potassium chloride. You would say, yes, the potassium is positive and the Cl is minus. I can show them just right next to each other. I'm just showing the potassium and the nitrogen right next to each other. Okay? Now you might say, well, why aren't charges shown? Well, the same thing here. I could show you KCl. I don't really have to show you charges. You need to know that those are charged. Well, you should know that these are charged because potassium is always positive. It means the negative nitrogen is negative. Okay? But this is resonance stabilized. These electrons can move into the carbonyl, electrons up. All right? We can do resonance. All right, I'm just abbreviating the, the linkage over here. Delocalize the charge into that oxygen, but I could also come back and delocalize the charge into the other oxygen. Because the charge is spread over two oxygens and a nitrogen, it's fairly stable. That's why the emid has a fairly low pKa. That's why hydroxide can deprotonate it. And we can get to this point plus water. All right. But now, this nitrogen, even though it is delocalized, it will act as a nucleophile, and we can come in here with um, some type of R group with a leaving group, and we can do SN2 chemistry. All right? It will alkylate on the nitrogen. All right? Even though it's delocalized, we can still, we know it alkylates on the nitrogen, so we used the long pair here. SN2 and we make the N carbon bond and we alkylated our imid. Okay. Doesn't say it over here, but what we're doing is the Gabriel synthesis. We'll get there. We'll get there. After we alkylate our imid, we can now hydrolyze the amide. It's almost like two amides. We can hydrolyze both nitrogen carbonyl bond. All right. Need to look at this. This will give phthalic acid. Which, by the way, that's why this is called phthalimid. Okay. Um, I, did, I ca just called this a generic emid here. When the emid is, uh, has the benzene ring here, it's called thalimid. It's called thalimid because the diacid here is called phthalic acid. But if you double hydrolyze the both N carbonyl bonds, you get phthalic acid. But you also get a primary amine. All right, that's the ultimate leaving group. Okay. Right back over here. We hydrolyze this nitrogen carbonyl bond. We're going to get the amine plus the carbonyl, the carboxylic acid. Of course, that would be in the basic form. Here, since we're under acidic conditions, we're, we have the acidic form, neutral form. Liberate the amine, okay? Now, some of you are following this, and I'm sure some of you are not. If you're not following this, you need to go back and work through hydrolysis mechanisms and then even do this one, all right? 
Acidic conditions, protonate carbonyl, water adds to carbonyl, eventually you're going to kick off the nitrogen, but you got to make sure you take care of the proton appropriately. Then you do chemistry at the other carbonyl and eventually kick off the nitrogen. Eventually you will form a primary amine. Now, uh, you got some acid-base chemistry here because the amine is basic. It's actually going to exist in the acidic form, protonated form under these conditions. All right. Ultimately, this is a way to make primary amines. Okay. Um, where we use thalamid, we deprotonate it, put the alkyl group on, then do a double hydrolysis to liberate the primary amine. Now another way to maybe try to make this product is to have an RX and react this with ammonia. All right. Now ammonia could act as a good nucleophile. We could get All right. We could get to this part here plus the leaving group. We can include a base. All right. To deprotonate that, and we can get a primary amine. The problem here that we discussed in Organic 1, when we were looking at SN2 reactions of amines, okay, here we use an amine to alkylate it. Al direct alkylation of amines. Problem is, the primary amine is going to be formed, all right, because the, the ammonia can act as a base. You can actually get your neutral primary amine in this reaction, and then it will start reacting again. All right, and we call that polyalkylation. If you look back at organic one, that is going to be a problem. You're going to end up with two and then three alkyl groups on your nitrogen. This approach using thalamid, okay, only alkylates once. Because once you get to this point, this is no longer nucleophilic because the lone pair is conjugated. It's only nucleophilic as the anion. So it only alkylates once. You then do a double hydrolysis. You get a good yield of your primary amine. Where if you try to do a direct alkylation of an amine, the primary amine product can alkylate again. Okay, for homework, here is a uh, example of a Gabriel synthesis, which is what this is called. Gabriel synthesis of primary amines. Okay, and that's what we called it over here. Starting with an imid, the most common imid is to use thalimid. because this portion over here really doesn't matter. This will end up in the waste container. Um, but just historically the most common imid to use for the Gabriel synthesis. All right. Now, I'm going to end this video here. Next reaction is a unique reaction where we can convert a primary amide to a nitrile. And that's going to be a dehydration because we're essentially removing H2O. And we will 
We can do it with either thionyl chloride or acetic anhydride. You should be able to do it with both. All right. This is going to be standard fundamental chemistry we've seen before. Slight, a couple of new little twists to it, but again, once you see it, should be pretty straightforward. See if you can do it on your own, uh, particularly using thionyl chloride. We'll probably do that first. All right. This was shown in the uh, outline here. Then we'll move into chemistry of cyano groups or nitriles, and really the uh, the main reaction for now will simply be hydrolysis back to the carboxylic acid. Anything in the box can be hydrolyzed back to the carboxylic acid. All right, either by aqueous acid or aqueous base. We'll look at that. And in the next video, we'll also look at a couple of miscellaneous things to finish up this handout, including some polymers. Um, yes. So one more video here for this handout. Um, and then that will largely be the... Um, chemistry that we showed in this uh, overview here. We will then move into uh, some simple additions that I think you'll see on the, uh, the syllabus outline. And that is a uh, the next handout.